All right, now let's proceed to section three. Now, let me just give you a brief about section three, the type of question. Unlike previous section one and two, where we had option given, here there is no option available and we need to solve. And the answer that is to be recorded is up to two digits after decimal. If on calculation there is more than two digits, then of course that would be suitably truncated. Let's see, the first question, that one is quite an easy one. And that has been brought from the topic of calculation of work done. See, it says the particle is moved along a path A, B, B, C, C, D. In this way, it has been moved, see. A, B, B, C, C, D, D, E, E, F, and F, A. That has been there. And the force which is doing that work is this. You could see that force. That may be a bit tricky, so you'll have to be careful. This is alpha yi cap plus 2 alpha x j cap, where x and y are in meter and alpha is minus 1 newton per meter. Let me just do the calculation in terms of alpha and at the end we may replace alpha by minus 1. We need to calculate the total work done. Let's see, though the expression of force may seem that the calculation would be difficult, but there's a nice symmetry involved with this. Like just say, when we move from A to B, the distance is one. I would not be requiring the J cap component of the force because displacement is there and I require the force which is along X. And throughout AB, the Y coordinate is constant. So what is the force that is responsible? That is simply alpha I cap would be the force which is responsible for doing the work when we move from A to B because this is not required because the displacement would be perpendicular and alpha Y I cap and Y is one. That's straightforward, right? And let's talk about the displacement. How much would be the displacement? Well, that is straightway one I cap. So this much is the work done for this segment. Now, let's go for the work done on this segment. For this segment, you see, I require the J cap component of the force because the displacement is happening along Y. So J cap component of the force is this much. And throughout BC, X equals to 1. So how much would be the force? That, of course, equals to 2 alpha J cap is the force, which is responsible for doing the work in this. And let's talk about the displacement. The displacement is minus of 0 0.5 J cap. So this is how we need to solve. So similarly, you can go with C, D, D, E, E, F, F, A. The pattern is exactly the same. You solve all those things and at the end you put alpha as minus 1. The option that would be there to fill or you may say the correct answer for this particular question would be 0 0.75 joule. So this would be the correct answer for first question section 3. Let's move to the second one. Okay, now let's move to the second question of section 3. And this has been brought from properties of bulk matter and specifically properties related to solid. Now, it has been a couple of encounter that there are certain topic which by and large students think that they may not be so important. But you see, by giving questions from these topics, the committee has really made a very clear message that each and every topic has to be taken with great sincerity. All right, so this message would be really helpful for the future aspirant because apart from solving, we are also doing a brief analysis and giving a small precise insight. Now it says, a block of weight 100 Newton is suspended by copper and steel wire of same cross section, which is 0 0.5 and length root 3 meter and 1 meter respectively. I better show the figure. So here is the situation. This block has a weight of 100 Newton and rest everything has been given so clearly. See, 
60 degree, 30 degree, the length, of course, has been given. Now, let's go back to the same question again. What it says is, see, the angle subtended is given 30 degree, 60 degree, that's there. An elongation in the copper and elongation in the steel, that has been represented by delta LC and delta LS. And we need to calculate the ratio of that. And even Young's modulus has been given. So it's something like this, see. I would be computing in this way. This, let me call it as TC, tension in the copper wire, and this will call it as TS, tension in the steel wire. Since it is an equilibrium, if we use the condition of equilibrium along horizontal, so I get TS cos 60, which is TS by 2, will be equals to TC cos 30, so root 3 TC by 2. That's going to give me the relation between the tension in the steel wire and tension in copper wire. Once I get it, calculating the ratio would not be at all a difficult job. Because you know, the formula goes straightforward. The elongation, of course, that is going to be FL divided by A times Y. F or the tension, it's a equivalently same thing. Now even you need not calculate the value. All you have to do is you need to calculate the ratio. And everything is there. The cross-sectional area is same. Young's modulus, the value has been given. You can compute the ratio. The ratio of tension has already been calculated. You put the value and you would be getting the ratio of elongation in copper to steel as 2. So the correct integer for this question is 2. Let's move to the second one.